we'd like to welcome Sarah Gavron, who's an award-winning director. Let's start with your early career beginnings. Yeah. Um, what first inspired you to get into filmmaking and what kind of filmmaker did you or do you want to be? Well, I was always really interested in drawing and painting and drama as a child. I wasn't one of those kids that was constantly in the a movie theatre or who was picking up a Super 8 camera. I just started having ideas for stories and realised that I was imagining films about the world around me. And it was only, I had this kind of epiphany when I was in my late teens and I went to see the films that were coming out of the sort of Thatcher era of Stephen Frears, Mike Lee and Ken Loach and Terence Davies that were about the world around us. And I could see that there was a vision there and there was someone telling those stories. And I got really excited and thought, that God, that's what I want to do. But I didn't have the guts to do it. I just thought, you know, I can't do that. Yeah. And it was only later when I really saw the work of Jane Campion and Mira Nye, I saw Salam Bombay and I saw Jane Campion's early work, Sweetie, and then later The Piano. And I thought, wow, there, there are women doing this and I want to do it. But then I, I, I got drawn into documentary and I am still very interested in documentary and I went down that route. It seemed an easier, more accessible route for me at that point. But I kept on coming back to this fact that I just loved narrative filmmaking and I wanted to tell, I wanted to make films. I did an English degree, and then after that, I went up to the Edinburgh College of Art. Um, I went up to Edinburgh partly because I was in love with a man who lived in Edinburgh, so that led me there. And then I went to the Art College, um, which was great, actually, because it was a real eye-opening. I was an MA student. I was the only MA student, but there were all these undergraduates, and they knew a whole lot more about film than I did. I hadn't made anything at that point. I got in on the basis that I'd done a degree, but, but I really there I made my first shorts. And that student group introduced me to Tarkovsky and Bergman and people I'd never heard of who I thought were amazing. And, and so I made a short there that went to the Edinburgh Film Festival. And then I went back into documentaries and worked for four years, first for Channel 4 and then for BBC, making political documentaries and all sorts of documentaries as a researcher and then as an assistant producer and finally doing tiny little bits of directing, but not really proper directing. And then I thought, I've got to do this. So I applied for the National Film School um, to do fiction and went there. I mean, the great advantage of being in a film school environment is you, you've got facilities, you've got fellow students, you've got tutors. Uh, the National Film School, they don't take many directors and you get a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. I got, had Stephen Frears as a tutor and he was extraordinary and sat in your cutting room and taught me you know, a lot. Yeah. And so that's the, what, what you don't get is on-set experience. And if I looked back and would to change anything, I'd say what I should have done alongside going to film school or after or before is be a runner, be anything on a, on a set. Because the first time I ever stepped onto a professional film set, I was the director. Wow. And that's a crazy thing, wow, really, yeah. because you don't know how it works, you don't know the professional environment, you don't know the structure, you're not yeah. used to the length of a shoot. You know, I made shorts, but that was a week, and suddenly I was doing six weeks or nine weeks and you know it's it's a huge it was yeah. a huge baptism by fire <laughs> <laughs> i made all these short films and a number of them i sent off to festivals or i sent off to agents or producers and i was you know getting little bits of response but nothing mm -hmm. amazing and it was only with it was the eighth film i made that was a film called losing touch that was my graduation film that got me noticed and that got accepted by um, various film festivals across the world and it won a royal television society award and Suddenly, agents started responding, and I, I went with Casarotto, and then I got meetings with BBC Films, and I got meetings with um, Film 4, and I was shown projects and, and went into pitch for them, and that changed everything. Right. Um, so, you know, I realised that actually the films before that just hadn't been, in a way, strong enough yeah. to get attention. Doing something always leads to something, mm -hmm. and I kind of never stood still. I, I like followed every lead, and I, I just pursued every you know, I went to see things, I went to talks, I uh, went to put myself up for every scheme because, in a way, that gives you a framework and it helps you structure. You know, if there are schemes saying we we're looking for a short film, you then write a script for it, and suddenly you find yourself doing something, yeah. even if you don't get into the scheme, then you've got a script, you can make it by yourself. And now, because the resources are available, because you can make films so much more cheaply, um, 
it's, it's more possible. And so I think it just is about keeping going. The journey through film school was realising that I had to be true to myself. Right. That in a way it wasn't working to be derivative and imitate other people or try things that weren't me. I had to find my own voice. I had to do a story that made sense for me. I went through a sort of journey of, of trying to make some very personal films and then realising that actually I really enjoyed working with writers. Right. And I linked up at the film school with this writer, Antonio Baldo, who wrote films that just mirrored my sensibility right. and that was a really good connection so that graduation film was with her and then later on I met Rosemary Kay who did This Little Life who again I had a connection with and then Abby Morgan who I've done two films with and also would love to continue to work with. The script is the hardest thing you know because you sort of worry over it and you don't know what it is and, and, then, and then when you get to shooting the biggest enemy I always find is time because yeah. you never, you know, time is money, you never have enough time, you're always up against the clock. Yeah. And that's where, I, as I've discovered, as I've, I've sort of gone through my career, an assistant director who totally navigates that for you and helps manage the whole schedule um, is, is your best friend yeah. <laughs> through that process. One of the important things I learned from the transition from film school to working in a professional environment was how important it was to work well with people. There was a kind of a film school, you know, you, uh, this is my film, and you, you, can, you feel you can behave badly. Actually, in the real world, um, I've realised that you have to learn how to get on with people. You, you, get, you have to learn how to get the best out of people. And Stephen Frears, who taught me at the film school, taught me a really important lesson, which is that, in a way, a lot of directing, this is how I interpreted his lesson, is the art of knowing when not to interfere. You know, right. sometimes you have to just let people Will do their job you know they are masters of their craft mm -hmm. so the designer you know you have to give them or the editor or the actors you have to give them the free reign and then you step in where you feel it needs a bit of guidance or right. you know it's moving away <coughs> or it's going on a detour yeah. but you don't necessarily have to kind of endlessly go this is the way it should be because right. that can restrict things and in a way, if you open yourself up, you can get incredible ideas coming from, because filmmaking is so collaborative, yeah. coming from all sorts of directions. And you have to sort of marshal that and make the best of it. How would you define your role as a director on set? On set? Yes. Or in general? Well, yeah. So in general, you're overseeing the yeah. whole thing. So you're kind of uniquely, I mean, apart from the producer, you're the one who's there from the very first to the very last, you right. know, and you have to oversee it all. And um, so really, you're the sort of jack of all trades and the master of none. You know? you're kind of, you, you've, got to get, you've got to delve into all those areas and, 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 and make it cohere, make it come together and keep it moving and keep mm -hmm. people motivated. But, but really, it's a creative role. So it's about making sure that every choice, and you're making so many decisions, you know, yeah. fits into the overall film. But you've also got to respond. I, I really think there are lots of parallels with having a child, because when you have a child, you kind of, it's your own, but then you have to go, OK, but it's not what I expected. It's this child, and this child likes woodwork or whatever it does, and right. I'll nurture that. And you, that happens with film. that You write the script, and it's one thing, and then you shoot it, and it does genuinely, with all those people involved and all the, the luck and chance and things that pe other people decide and all sorts of that. It becomes its own thing. And you have to recognise that and go, now it's become this, and how do we make that really, really work? Yeah. What advice would you give to other women who want to follow you? Yeah. I mean, for me, role models were really important and seeing that other women were doing it. I think if you can't see someone doing it, it's hard to imagine you doing it, yeah. you know, a woman like you or just a woman. You know? yeah. And so that <coughs> the, encour <coughs> Sorry. the encouraging thing is that there are that it's, there's a sea change happening. I think that now people are talking about the fact that there aren't any female directors or there are hardly any female yeah. directors. There are female directors, of course, but there's 4%, 7%, 12% is tiny, and it's got to change. And there are some really brilliant commissioners. You know, I mean, Tessa Ross at Film 4 has mentored and supported me through my career and been fantastic. And Cameron McCracken at Pathé is supporting female directors. And there are all sorts of people in the BFI supporting them. And, you know, and there, are, there are people out there who want to hear those stories. We're 51% of the population. Yeah. They, you know, we've got to be represented. It's crazy. Exactly. And there's a huge female audience out there. And I think it's just about having, as a director, it's going out with conviction. And it's 
being passionate about the story you want to tell and it's about not being deterred and it's not being worried if it feels like a boys club it's just that you've got something precious you want to tell it you know how to do it mm -hmm. go out there and do it I think one of the ways to survive in the industry is keeping yourself as open and as ready for the fight and the resolution and the conversation as you can. Casting is really important. It's um, you cannot be thorough enough. Uh, you should never uh, promise anyone anything.